my clock has struck six. Um, so the first order of business is executive session for legal negotiations and personnel. Um, we've allotted 30 minutes for this. And the um, justification for executive session is 16, Title 16, Section 313A1A for contracts, B for labor relations agreements with employees, and F, confidential attorney client communications. Um, so uh, I would welcome a motion to go into executive session for those purposes. So moved. Thank Seconded. you, Flora. Diane second. Was that Diane second? Thank you very much. Very good. So, um, Giver, please click your um, your yes button, or if you're opposed, click no. I'm, I'm seeing all the yeses, very good. And we'd like for Brian and Bernie Lambeck to join us, correct? Anybody else, Brian? No, that's, that's all for now. And then after uh, Bernie, I would like to have Carla join us. Um, okay, Scott, after Bernie. Yes, Mindy. Um, it was pointed out to me after our meeting last time that um, Jim came in and we did not invite him in so we need to um, explain if people are coming in or aren't supposed, you know, who we're bringing in, who we're voting for. Excellent point. I, I think um, maybe uh, if we invite Jim in Abby, in order to take care of technical issues that might arise during the course of the executive session, would that be acceptable to board members? Is there an objection? Sure. So while we're in there, we call out to him to come in. Uh, if or if there's something that he sees that he needs to deal with inside, um, I, I don't really know how it works. And this is Jim. Uh, what, what, one thing we could do is um, I could remain out. It would just mean that one or multiple board members would have to tell me as we're moving people out of the breakout room and into the breakout room. Usually I toggle you'll see me jump in and out several times to toggle board members in and out. Um, so, but it's, it's easy for me to stay out. It's uh, it was really more for the technical elements of it. Sure. Um, if you can do it, uh, if you can handle it while staying out of, um, I think we'd probably. Of course, no problem. Absolutely. At least, um, please. Thank you, Jim. Very much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay. Um, so, very good. Are there any other points raised before we go in, before we enter the room? Uh, Chris McVeigh, welcome. Hey, um, hey Scott. Okay, um, so in that case, let's, uh, let's enter the room. And Jim, please invite Bernie Lambeck in as well. Will do, thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, we still have one piece of unfinished business from our executive session, which is um, a brief statement by Jonas Inno Van Fleet. So I just wanted to uh, read this into the record. This is the negotiation summary from our last negotiation session with the teachers union uh, last Tuesday, February 9th. Uh, we reached an agreement regarding payments for time spent on duties uh, that extends beyond the limit of 90 minutes per week. And both sides agree that the negotiation process has been conducted with mutual respect and an appreciation for the interests and goodwill of each side. Thanks, Scott. Many thanks, Jonas. Um, great. So uh, welcome everyone, um, guests, members of the public, staff members, whoever is here is most welcome. Um, do we have any agenda revisions for tonight? 
we have a pretty um, uh, Chris. You're muted, Chris, I believe. Um, I'm going to ask that we um, put on for a future agenda item, uh, if we don't get to it tonight, having a discussion and a vote on moving public comment to the beginning of the meeting, as opposed to keeping it at the, the dog tail end of the meetings. Noted. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other agenda revisions? I had one, Scott. Thank you, Caroline. Go ahead. Um, the superintendent evaluation, it's not really going to be a discussion for 30 minutes. It's a five minute update. And so then on future agenda items, if we could move the discussion, um, I don't, it would be great if it could be the first meeting in March, but if the reorganization takes too long, I would understand um, if we couldn't do that. But the first meeting in March would be my request. Thanks. Our thanks to you, Caroline. I think there was a measurable sigh of relief at, um, at that. Thank you. Um, other, other agenda revisions before we move on? If not, Student reports, Anna and Towns. Awesome. Um, okay, to start things off, the U32 library um, is going to be uh, um, holding uh, virtual book groups. We'll be reading The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas and uh, discussing it over uh, different dates in March um, so that students can engage with each other and with uh, important uh, books uh, virtually. We have had our winter sports um, start up and we've actually had some games recently and boys hockey won their first game in a very, very long time. They won 10 to three. Girls hockey won 10, um, 10 to three as well. And girls basketball won 38 to 28. And with these games, if any of you, if the public or the board are interested, we, um, I think it's called CVT Sports and it's on YouTube so you can watch the games. Um, awesome. Uh, as I'm sure everyone here knows, uh, we had a remote day um, uh, uh, yesterday because of the weather. Um, and that was our first, the first time that we have had a remote day that we've been able to transition into a remote schedule because of weather changes. Um, I'm not gonna say that students were thrilled about it, but it was, uh, it was a new experience. <laughs> yeah, um, we also, in the middle school this year, they're doing what are called PIPs, which is a personal interest project. And you can look at those and see what they did on the newsletter, which is linked by Jody Emerson. Thank you so much for doing that. And you can see all the different projects they did. I think there was one about psychology, how different people learn, and it just um, allowed students to do a project that let them do their own work independently and study something they're interested in. Next week is the start of our February vacation. Um, and uh, a lot of people are looking forward to. It'll be, you know, a, a week and, and uh, three days of break. We also have in the very end of March, there's gonna be a college fair that's gonna be virtual, which is pretty exciting to, as a junior, I'm starting to think about college. So it's really nice to see that we can still, you know, learn about our future and sort of get on a pathway for that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's everything. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I don't know if there are any board member questions for either of you. Um, you still sound upbeat, but I guess it's because the, the vacation is, is <laughs> nigh. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah, well, awesome. we hope you, you, we hope you managed to have a great time. Um, basically under house arrest. So, um, all right. So superintendent, COVID-19 update. Uh, yeah, so uh, just uh, a few little updates here. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of us are looking forward to that uh, 
that break coming in uh, next week for our teachers and uh, leadership team and and uh, even myself uh, looking forward to uh, hitting the snooze button a couple times uh, next week. So uh, do we? It's been a uh, it's been a uh, a lot of action has happened over the last uh, since our last board meeting. Uh, if you uh, just want to just gave a uh, we did receive a mask donation of over fifteen hundred masks that were donated to our school district by a nonprofit known as Another Way Incorporated, and they're based in Montpelier. And uh, we did uh, we we did thank them for their uh, donation, which we will definitely be putting to good use in our in our schools across our schools. The uh, student attendance still continues to be very high. Uh, on average, uh, the student attendance rate, daily attendance rate in across all of our buildings, every building is uh, over 95%. Uh, and our average for the entire district, when you add up all the students, 95.5% daily attendance rate. Uh, last, uh, on February 10th, we did uh, conduct surveillance testing, uh, which is uh, for our, our staff, it's called the asymptomatic surveillance testing for educators in our in our district and everyone that works in our schools. Uh, we continue to, uh, we do this at least once a month uh, is what the uh, what we work with the uh, Department of Health and Agency of Education. And I'm proud to say that we are amongst the highest, if not number one in the state of Vermont for participation uh, in this program. Uh, and we did this again on uh, uh, February 10th and we'll be doing it again in March. Uh, right along every every month, and I just want to thank uh, our school nurses uh, for leading this efforts at the schools. Uh, it's great that we have a school nurse at every school to help out with this. Quite frankly, uh, and also very happy with our COVID nineteen coordinator who has been uh, working around the clock. Uh, we did have two positive cases uh, events uh, that uh, happened uh, since uh, our last meeting, and we've been uh, our COVID nineteen coordinator and our principals. Uh, and have been working with food service uh, staff and other other staff members throughout the district uh, to uh, prepare for some remote days that are, that did, that are happening. Uh, 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 you probably heard about the East Montpelier Elementary School is on remote till the end of uh, this week. Elizabeth, do you have anything? Is Elizabeth here? I'd like to see if she has anything to add. Uh, she has been doing just doing such great work uh, throughout this entire last few weeks. Or maybe I, I did try to tell Elizabeth she needs to go to sleep though after this. So. That is what I'll be doing. Um, <laughs> it's been it's been interesting. You know, it's a it's an interesting um, year, of course, and um, every situation is different. That's one of the challenging parts because everything is you have to deal with it in a different way, and you have a lot of different players. Um, but our staff, I feel, have been just incredible and I'm looking forward to having staff be able to be vaccinated and free of quarantine should they be close to anybody with a, um, a, a positive case um, but you know it's it's a great teamwork it's amazing you know we had we were calling people all last night and the staff the administrators at U32 and the staff and administrators at East Montpelier you know, I could not do this without them. That was really, really helpful. And, um, but I think we're doing pretty well. And we still have no transmission, but you know, there'll be cases here and there. So appreciate everybody's support. That's what we've needed. <clears throat> I think that's all I have to say. Unless people uh, have questions. Uh, uh, thanks and, and admiration to all of you um, for dealing with this unbelievably difficult situation day after day after day after day. Um, board member questions? If not, we can move on to 5.2.2. Okay, great. And this, uh, oh, uh, before we go on to that, uh, I'll ask Jim Garrity to uh, please put up the uh, share screen here. But before we get into this, uh, uh, I wanted to uh, just also uh, highlight that we did complete the site visit portion of the curriculum management review, uh, and that took place on February 8th to the 10th. Uh, I, I really want to uh, thank our teachers and principals uh, for uh, being, you know, just being just so great and spectacular uh, throughout the entire year and, and, and just continuing that effort on February 8th through the 10th. I also want to point out someone uh, that I have to say, uh, 
you know, another person who probably needs to catch up on some sleep this upcoming week is uh, Jen Miller at Arsenal. Uh, she uh, not only had to work around the clock in preparing the uh, document, the documents and artifacts for the uh, curriculum management review, but she also worked in coordinating a lot of the work regarding the site visits and uh, also served as a tour guide as well so, for some of our visitors. So I just want my hats off to uh, uh, Jen Miller and her, and her efforts and her leadership in uh, really moving this forward. So thank you, Jen. And uh, moving into the entry plan. So as you are aware that we've been, uh, I've been working with uh, implementing a superintendent entry plan. I've been trying to stick to it. It's been very difficult. Uh, ultimately, in a non-pandemic year, I would love to have had this done by three months into the school year, uh, but that's not what happened based on uh, our, just our current situ our circumstance, but we're definitely sticking through it. Uh, I've been working, meeting with uh, different folks throughout the district. Uh, teachers, some students, ESP members, principals, central office, and school boards. And uh, what I've been doing is uh, I have been meeting with certain groups. And uh, if you can put that back up, I don't know what happened to that, Jim. You had it up there. Oops. Yeah, uh, I've been meeting with certain groups, and ultimately, uh, what we what we the next step of this process is just to go over. Uh, I met with every board member individually and, and uh, we did talk about uh, some of the uh, uh, the ideas was to try to get to see the, the district through your lens, uh, through your eyes as individual board members. And uh, what I did now is I'm, I'm sharing the information with the board uh, I, as I do with each group of, of folks that I've met with. And uh, I take the personally identifiable information out so no one can tell who said what, but I, I think it's important, I think it has some value to share with the board what folks have shared. And uh, if there's any additional clarifications or uh, anything that you think I missed, or if I think if you think that there's something that needs to be revised or changed, uh, you know, this would be an opportunity to do that. So, uh, you know, over the next 15 minutes, I hope we can go through this and just look at some of the questions here. Uh, so uh, Jim, if you can scroll down to the first question. Brian, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering too, if um, during this, uh, if your plan is, is to do this anyway, but to kind of focus on your takeaways, because um, there's, there's a fair amount of info in there and um, just what really kind of came together for you. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what I can tell you is, uh, I can definitely share some takeaways. What I, I can tell you is there is a lot of alignment in what different groups have been sharing with me because I haven't finished with uh, certain groups yet. I uh, haven't uh, been able to, I, I definitely will be putting together an entry plan report uh, for all stakeholders about what I've been learning about the district. Uh, and so um, these are just, so, so the idea, this is the next step of the process. So getting it, soliciting the information, did I miss anything? Is there something that uh, uh, you, you want me to con uh, add or uh, consider? And uh, after that, I'll take that back and add that to, a larger report of the entry plan. Right. Does that answer your question, Scott? Sure. Um, do you, uh, because board members have read this, uh, do you want do you want them to kind of chip in? Um, yeah, yeah. I think if there's anything that I missed, if we can go down each question, I just want to give the board an opportunity. Board members uh, to give give them an opportunity to uh, just give me anything, any additional information under uh, each one of these, so I have an idea. Uh, if there's something I, I just want to make sure I got all the information the correct way. Great. Okay. So uh, if, there, if we can look at the first one, uh, board members, why, why did you seek election to the board? What do you hope to accomplish? I know I sent this out already several days ago. So I'm hoping that uh, if there's anything that you want additional clarification on, or you want to, um, you want to add something that I, I missed or may have missed, um, or you want something that, you know, th that you don't want in there, let's, let me know because uh... I don't see any hands up or anything. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go down to the next question. Oops. I had my hand up, you guys. It's oh, Joe. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, 
Brian, I just had a quick comment. So I'm pretty sure I'm the one who said uh, something about being unhappy with proficiency-based grading. I just want to clarify my problem was with proficiency-based GPA. Okay. And Thank I have you. been very quiet in this pandemic about that issue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jill. And that, this is why I'm doing yeah. it. I want to make sure we got it the right way. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else on question one, or should we move to question two? What groups, individuals have a major influence on schools? Uh, and I did uh, omit the uh, names of specific community members. If you could scroll down, Jim, just to... Moving. Anyone for question two? I'm not okay, seeing anybody. Let's, okay, let's question three. Uh, what are your expectations as me as your superintendent? Okay. I must have done a good job collecting it. That's I feel, I feel I'm feeling pretty good right now, but we still have a few more. So, uh, what are we doing well? You love the dishwasher, don't you? What was very interesting about this one, I have to say, is every, almost literally like every single, and, and this is just stuff I have to almost literally every single board member. Uh, teacher, uh, people I've spoke with kept talking about the TA system at U32. I mean, everyone loves the TA system. Uh, so, you know, I, I see that here. It, it is, it's just highlighted here, but uh, that was, some, there was some, there's a lot of commonalities and you'll, I think you'll see them as they come out uh, when I issue the report. Hmm. Okay, move down to what could we be doing better? And the uh, uh, the uh, ultimate goal just so is to when we do get when I do synthesize this information and put it into the entry plan report, th the goal is to ultimately have the entry plan report. Hopefully, around the same time we have the curriculum review document, so we'll have some info. We'll have some artifacts to really see how things line up or don't line up with what people said and shared versus what uh, the review folks also saw. And then the last one, I don't see anyone else. Uh, so uh, the last one, last, I think this is the last question, if I recall. Jim, can you just scroll it up? What is the matching behavior between what you say we're gonna accomplish and what we're actually spending money on? And I think that's I, I don't it. know if, sorry, Maybe Brian, um, I think I, I just might, I think Elizabeth, we, we can hear the sounds of domestic yeah, bliss. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, Elizabeth, if you can hear me, um, if you could please mute your mic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I, uh, so, uh, I think this is, is this still, if you want to go down one more. Hey, Elizabeth, you're, uh, your mic is, uh, you have a hot mic. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. So I think that's really all I have right now uh, on the entry plan. If there's any, uh, any additional information uh, about, about these responses, uh, you know, I know we, we did it. We do this in a, in a, in a, uh, in a public session. If there's something that, you know, you, you go to sleep tonight and you think, oh, wait a minute, he didn't have something. Please let me know. But uh, there is a week. I, I am taking some time off next week, but I, I also do plan on working next week. And I'm going to be working on the entry, some of this entry plan uh, a conglomeration of what, we, what we're doing. So um, very intentional work uh, next week with uh, the entry plan.
there are a lot of interesting similarities. And I think, uh, I think it's very exciting stuff. I think it's really gonna be uh, very exciting to see what folks have shared across the district. So any questions, right. any comments about the entry plan? Yeah, um, board member questions, comments, Kari? Yeah, I just wanted to say it's kind of neat to see the responses compiled and it. To me, it's it seems like another yet another input into setting up strategic planning, along with the curriculum management review and the um, student learning outcome review. So good job. Thank you. Great. Other thank you. Other comments, questions. If not, we can move to five point two point three. Search update for administrators. So I will. Uh, is Carla still here, or uh, I'll turn this one over to Carla? She, she, we've been working a lot uh, in trying to align these. Um, is she here? There she yeah, is. Yeah, I'm here. All right. <laughs> I went the wrong way. That's okay. <laughs> um, both searches are being well progressed. Um, actually, the uh, business administrator. Uh, meeting is having their first main committee meeting uh, tomorrow evening or afternoon. And then uh, from that meeting, they will pretty much have um, set up the interviews for candidates on March 2nd. So that's where everything is progressing there. The uh, IT director position um, is also progressing. Their uh, committee meeting is being set up as uh, tomorrow. Well, sometime later this week or the following. Um, I don't have that in, uh, exact time and date, but um, everything's progressing. The uh, criteria for each of the groupings have been done uh, based on the job descriptions. So everyone that's moving forward in these committees will be uh, quickly taken care of. So here's hoping that within March, we will have some very definitive uh, decisions. Uh, Carla, this is uh, Jim Garrity. Um, I did want to mention that um, you know the uh, the committee meeting, uh, the next committee meeting is going to be uh, March the fifth, which is I think a Friday, based on some uh, some schedule changes from the couple of the team members. And okay. so uh, we'll we'll provide another status update at the next board meeting. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, board member. Questions, Caroline. Thanks. Um, I had a question about the business administrator search. Um, it says of the seven applicants, three applicants met the job requirements as listed. So I have two questions. One of those three, how many resided in Vermont? And two, are we interviewing people even if they didn't meet that requirement, if you're allowed to share that in open session? Thanks. Well, on the uh, memo, it indicated of the, that there's three that met the requirements. We do have um, a Excel sheet that we've given the uh, criteria, how they've met it. Uh, and there are two on that list that the committee will be reviewing as well that may not have met all of the criteria, but have um, skills within some of the areas that we're looking for. So it's not a cut and dry, here's the only ones, but uh, of the candidates that, um, of all the candidates of seven, um, there are, uh, let's see, there's, uh, there's five, let's say four that are outside of Vermont and three that are inside of Vermont. Um, does that answer your question, Caroline? Um, I think that is good enough. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Lindy. Um, is it possible to know who's on these committees? It says roles, but not who these people are. And I'm just curious if that's something we can know. Sure, I can. Um, Give me an email. Yeah, email. I can email you the information as to who's on the committees. Yeah, sure. We'll get the information. Yeah, I can do that tomorrow morning or tonight before I leave, depending on. <laughs> Could that be emailed to the whole board? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. 
I did notice that there weren't, I, we were asked as board members to submit if we wanted to be on it. I don't know if that's what the community member is, is that it was a board member. I guess when, when we do our reorganization, it might be helpful to sort of nominate a, a board member or two who could be on these committees if that's something that we want um, to participate in. Yeah, I just want to let you know, we do have a board member on that committee. Okay, great, thank you. You're welcome. Great, um, anything else before we move on? Otherwise, thanks very much, Brian and Carla. Um, we'll go on to education quality. Kari, would you like to take this? Sure, thanks, Scott. So, um, Great, this month's topic is math. And uh, of course that's as fundamental to our mission as, as anything we're gonna consider this year. So hopefully this will be um, informative for you and stimulating. Um, pleased to report that we had a record turnout at our last Ed Quality Committee meeting. We had about a dozen of us showed up um, for the in-depth version of tonight's discussion. And that was great to see And I hope folks continue to turn out and share in the learning. Um, tonight, we're going to get a chance to learn a bit about how we organize the math curriculum, uh, as well as some insights into the aspects of the instruction, including we're going to hear from some uh, incredibly charming students. And of course, there's plenty of data for us to take a look at in this area, help us understand our student achievement. I want to thank Jen miller Arsenault in advance for preparing the presentation. Um, each of these pre presentations that we get is, I'm sure, a ton of work. Um, and on top of everything else Jen has been up to, I just feel very lucky. We, this is a v valuable opportunity for us to look, um, you know, really closely into something that matters a whole lot to our students. So, um, and then last thing um, is before I turn it over is as we go through this, um, keep the future in mind um, and and think about what we might want to take from this for strategic planning, and we'll return to that after the presentation. So, Jen, if you're ready to go, please take it over. Jen, are you muted? All right, there we go. Sorry, I was having a screen sharing glitch. Um, I think I'm sharing now, correct? Can you see that? Okay, all right. So I'm gonna um, talk through a little bit as Kari just said, and we'll take it from there. I'm gonna go to presentation mode here. Okay. So the first thing that I want to let you all know about again is the um, overall the standards and the performance indicators. We um, have articulated five standards. You can see them listed in front of you. Uh, it's important to note that in the younger grades, statistics and probability is really an emphasis on measurement and data. And, um, and that functions doesn't start, it doesn't start to show up until grade eight. Our standards are aligned to the Common Core State Standards. I did put a link in there for you all if you're interested in seeing the progressions. So you can really see um, what we start with in uh, pre-K and K around number and quantity and how those expectations build, really striving to, to create coherence in the system. And then another thing that is important to note is that typically our kids um, through Algebra 2. If they've been successful in meeting course expectations through Algebra 2, then they have achieved our standards um, for the graduation level. So that's important to know. And, um, and also, as you know, we offer um, more courses beyond Algebra 2 for kids. I want to talk through a, a few uh, pieces regarding instruction. Just so everybody knows, I believe most of you know right now that we adopted a program K through eight last year called Ready Classroom Mathematics. We've done a lot of work in um, professional learning for our teachers around mathematics, really understanding language and concept and procedure and building on levels of knowing. And our teachers were still um, desiring a program to continue to um, create some coherence and provide support for them as they were teaching math. So we vetted a lot of, um, you know, we used uh, Ed Reports criterion, uh, criteria to vet 
programs and then we took a closer examination of a few and we ultimately adopted Ready Classroom Math. Along with Ready Classroom Mathematics comes an online instructional component called iReady. We piloted iReady last year. We purchased iReady this year. So we use the iReady Math Diagnostic right now, kindergarten through eighth grade. This fall, it was optional for kindergarten. Our kindergarten students were just learning how to use their tablets. Um, this winter, all of our students will have completed the iReady Diagnostic. There's some data in the presentation later that I can highlight for you. And then another thing that's important to note is that there's an online instruction um, component. And based on the results of the iReady Diagnostic, kids get a, a, an instructional path, a personalized path in iReady, and teachers can continue to um, assign lessons. That's important to know. Um, it's important to know that we're engaging in ongoing professional learning about our programs and that this is really year two of implementation. Um, I want to really uh, give a shout out to our math instructional coaches, Ellen Dorsey and Ann Carter. They've worked really hard. This uh, middle part here is a, an example of a course that they've created in Canvas to support our teachers in an ongoing way around implementation. And then finally, I included some of our high leverage math practices for you to take a look at the things that we want to see actually not just in math classrooms, but across the board. Um, things like really effective questioning, um, making sure that we're being precise with our language, making sure that there's some uh, real world application and context using formative assessment on a daily basis, those things. So this is the part that Kari talked about. This probably stole the show, the video, the last time. So I'm going to show it in a minute. I'm, I always, you know, I, I it takes me, I get flustered when I have to share my sound. So bear with me in just a minute when I pull that up. But I want to lay the context for this um, video. So uh, a huge thanks to Jen Fitch from East Montpelier Elementary. These are her third graders from last year. And, um, and this is an example of leveraging technology during the period of school dismissal to deepen uh, multiplicate, an understanding of multiplicative reasoning. So we expect our students to know multiplication in four ways. We want them to know uh, multiplication as groups of, as repeated addition, as arrays, and as the area model. And you're gonna see that, you can see the assignment there that Jen had posted. Um, and you're going to see some kids answer those questions. So give me just a minute. Uh, I need to go to more. And and. I chose eight times three because um, eight plus eight equals 16, 16 plus four equals 20, and 20 plus four equals 24. Hi everyone, I chose three times eight because it has the most efficient way to use my favorite strategy. Um, first, I'd take the three eights, eight plus eight is 16. And I broke up the 16 into 6 and 10. Um, I broke up the 16 in, I mean, the 6 into 4 and 2. I added the 4 to the 8, which got me to 12. 12 plus 10 equals 22, and 22 plus 1. I mean, two equals 24. And that's how I like to figure out multiplication. Bye. Hi, guys. So I'm solving the problem 56 times 5. And so I'd write 50 times 5 equals 250. And then I'd write six times five equals 
30. So 50 times 50 plus 30 would be would be 280. So up here I'd write 280. I could also make an area model. So So, 6 would go here, 50 would go here, and 5 and 5 can go on the sides. So, 5 times 50 would be 250, and 6 times 5 is 30. So, 250 plus 30 is 280. So I can't wait to hear your problems, and yeah. So I picked 56 times 5. I know 56 using price value times 10 is 560. I know that half of 10 is 5. So what? So half of 560 will be the product. And half of 560 is 280. Hey everyone, I'm going to be doing 17 times 7. So I split the 17 up into um, 9 and 8. And so I know that 7 times 9 is 63 and 8 times 7 is 56. And so I split the 63 and up into 60 and 3 and 56 into 50 and 6. So um, 60 plus 50 equals 110. So I have a three and six left. So six plus three is nine. Sorry if it looks like a four. Um, 110 plus nine equals 119. My next strategy is a little bit more simple. Simple is always nice. Um, so I split the 17 up into seven and 10. So seven times 10 is 70 and seven times seven equals 49. So, 70 plus 40 equals 110, and 9 plus 110 equals 119. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye. I chose 8 times 3B. All right, so I hope that that was enjoyable for all of you as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that video uh, in just a little while. Another thing that I wanted to point out was just a little bit of what's happening in the middle school and the high school instructionally as well. The example for middle school is an example um, that Hala St. Peter shared with us. He engages in data chats with his students. So um, when the iReady diagnostic results are available, he really sits down and, um, and talks to kids about what their goals are, what their current uh, strengths are, their current areas for growth. Those are quotes from the, um, the fuller sort of transcript that he wrote up for us. So you can see that this year's harder. You all know you've been supporting our middle school teachers to try to have some more co-planning time. Their schedule, um, just the way that we've been able to organize and get our kids into school is much tighter. Um, but this, this is certainly a practice that he um, intends to, to enact as much as possible. And then the Examples from the high school, again, you all can, um, can look at them when you have the time and the inclination. These are actually um, assignments that were collected as part and uh, submitted as part of the curriculum management review that we were just talking about. So, um, so there is all of that for you. And then there's the data. And, um, you know, the Ed Quality Committee, we've been um, trying to get into our rhythm, figuring out what works for us, what's the right size uh, amount of data and analysis. And so um, there are a lot of slides and we're not going to go through them tonight. I'm happy to um, try to answer questions that you might have. I want to point out a few important things and then I've been asked to kind of share, um, share my analysis right now. So, one thing that I would say is that you know, and we've talked a number of times, and we did last month during the continuous improvement planning, that our math scores um, have room for improvement. They haven't improved much over the years. 
Um, we are at or sort of below by and large the, um, the state average at times. We're trying hard to dig into that. Um, to the slides that I didn't share in this presentation, but I'll make sure to put back in the literacy presentation were ones that you did see in this in the continuous improvement planning presentation. And those are the scatter plots, scatter plots that show that we have um, gaps in achievement, differences, pretty significant ones um, between the students who qualify for free and reduced lunch and our students who don't qualify for free and reduced lunch. Our students who qualify for um, IEPs, individualized education plans, and students who aren't on IEPs. So we're working on that as well. You remember um, Kelly had recently talked about the um, annual performance review and the state improvement strategy that we're working on. So all of this work sort of goes together. Um, there are lots and lots of other slides um, around the data. And again, I'm happy to talk with you about those in more detail um, if you have questions. Well, I think that um, one thing that's important, like the, the Ed Quality Committee asked me to consider um, why do we think the scores are, are what they are? And I mean, if we knew, we would be immediately uh, addressing that and remediating it. Um, but I have a couple of thoughts, and I also want to, again, thank, um, I ran my initial thinking by, um, by Ellen and Ann, and just appreciate um, their weighing in on this, too, and helping me get more clarity as well. So one thing is, um, you saw in that video, our, the, a number of those students had a really strong sense of number. They understood combinations of making 10, and, um, and they could then apply that to multiplicative reasoning, right? They were breaking apart numbers and putting them back together. Uh, number sense is super important. And sometimes um, we see as kids are getting older, sometimes they're <laughs> counting like this, right? That um, it's really an indication of, um, of number sense that um, needed to be strengthened a while ago. So we pay attention to that. We also want to make sure that there are plenty of opportunities for um, problem solving in real life, not just focusing on fact fluency for the sake of fact fluency or sort of solving lots of mathematical problems outside of um, real context and, and real life. Um, one thing we're thinking about is instructional time. There are differences in instructional time in mathematics, not only at the elementary level and um, the difference when we get into middle and high school, but also just overall we spend less instructional time, even when we've made the commitment um, for at least 60 minutes a day, um, that's less than we are, are spending in literacy. That could be a factor. Um, we talked about uh, our scores had historically been lower than we wanted and, um, and being able to support teachers by having a math program, we're still um, implementing that and learning about it and, and working hard to sort of leverage it to its full potential. Um, we have not engaged in all of the PD that the company curriculum associates has to provide, but we do have um, more opportunities days with them. It's a matter of figuring out when. Um, uh, I think along those lines, ongoing professional learning in math is really key. Our, um, our instructional coaches are doing a phenomenal job and we don't have enough of them. They are spread thin. Um, in past years, we've also been able to engage in some ongoing professional development opportunities like lesson study and curriculum topic study. Um, we have not been able to engage in those opportunities uh, at all since last year. And even when we do, sometimes it's hard because we're trying to strike that balance between keeping kids with their teachers and pulling teachers out. Um, we have over the years had a, a steering committee that sometimes met during the um, school day, again, necessitating sometimes some subs and we've gotten away from that practice that might be an influence. Um, and then I think that um, probably one of the biggest issues, and we, we talk about this a lot, is just um, needing to continue to create a culture of, um, of math 
that promotes math as sort of beautiful and universal, um, where we can say that everybody is a mathematician, right? Like it is so socially acceptable to say, oh, I can't do that math or I don't do math or math isn't for me. Um, and we wanna change that culture. And, um, and so that's something I know in that slideshow later on, there were some board implications, things that I know I had thought about, about continuing to support interventions. You all mentioned that earlier in the budget presentation tonight. We need to do that. We need to intervene when kids need it. We need to focus on early interventions. Um, we need to, again, continue to commit to forms of professional learning, instructional coaching and other forms curriculum camp, doing some of that lifting during um, the end of the year when school is out and teachers can really focus. And I think probably most importantly, continuing to build on um, that idea that math is accessible to everybody. Everybody is a mathematician and math is fundamentally important. Um, so that is my current analysis. And um, I think I would turn it to Kari for the next steps or any questions. Yeah, yeah, we have a little bit of time for discussion. We start with any questions. Chris, you have something? I have uh, two questions for Jen. One is, um, it seems to me that math, unlike literacy, um, is beyond a lot of parents who cannot help their kids at home. Um, how much do you think that that contributes, if it if it does at all, uh, to how students perform in school. And the second is, how many additional math coaches uh, do you think we would need this year in order to make a difference? Um, so, I, so one thing I think is that um, your question, Chris, about math and parents is, is a complicated one. I think that um, many families uh, parents, caregivers probably learned math the way that I learned math, which was um, straight up procedure or standard algorithm with very little conceptual understanding. I mean, to be honest with you, having gone through the math lab in you know, 2012, 2013 and understanding math as a area model was like life changing for me. I, I didn't know it that way. So I think that um, Parents, when they can support kids with math learning at home, we, ha we have to continue to do some more um, education and support of our parents, um, some prompt, yes. you know, prompt stuff like that. And I think most importantly is just that language that math is fun, math is beautiful, right? Like all of those things are probably the most important um, things right now. That would be my quick answer to that. Um, and in, in terms of the coaching, um, I'm going to say ideally we'd be, have coaches in, in every building so that there's flexibility and understanding and we, you know, there has been a plan over the years to, to increase that. That would be my two cents. You know, is there any sense in, in trying to reach out and have um, instructional or um, forms for parents to come and learn about new math concepts? Just so it's not, so they're not alienated uh, by uh, and, and basically saying, oh, I can't, can't even talk to you. I don't know what you're talking about to, to their students. Yeah, and some of our um, principals and teachers have arranged those opportunities over the years. And in general, they've been well, and well attended and they've been a, a good way to support kids or teaching kids math games, those sorts of things. That's part of maybe an overall picture. It's not, it's not the only thing though. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> So great. Uh, we just have a, a few minutes left and I wanted to give a chance to, if anybody has a response to the question that we had for you, which is what information from this review do you want to make sure we carry, carry forward and um, consider when we get into strategic planning? Um, does anybody have anything that comes to mind? Scott. I just like to second what Jen had to say about creating the culture of of kind of mathophilia um, and this idea that is, you know, a human um, a human activity that is as natural as speaking and um, using language uh, and, uh, and and creating that culture in the way that 
you know, Chris was sort of suggesting, not just in the school, but more broadly as well, so that it, um, it really is a, a, a culture and, and not just kind of a hothouse plant. Great, thank you. Caroline, you have something? Yeah, thanks. Mine was um, actually somewhat similar to Scott's, but I, really keeping that piece, um, you know, that Jen had highlighted about keeping math fun. I think there was a lot of research about math being a lot more isolated in the past. And so making it more of a um, collaborative approach and something that you can do, not just, um, you know, doing math worksheets in your room, but actually like having discussions about it. So um yeah that that one is really important and i think the idea that jen touched on about having it just socially acceptable to say oh i'm not really that great at math um i think even in educational um groups and settings people have historically been very comfortable to say i'm not good at math whereas they would never say um you know i'm not a strong reader and so i think just continuing that um, I think those are those are great in terms of what information and data um, coming back. I I would just love to hear you know more about how it's going and the opportunities that we have to to um, to increase both of those, both the confidence people have with math, the social acceptance, or um, or no longer accepting, like to to get people comfortable if they are struggling with math that it is extremely important to build that skill. So thanks. Thank you. Brian. Yeah, I uh, appreciate the presentation and uh, I definitely know we have a lot of work to do in math. Uh, so uh, you know, we, that's uh, something that we definitely have to look at and look into. Uh, you know, the culture, the culture of math, mathophilia, those are all things. I also uh, appreciate the, uh, the desire to do, uh, to add coaches and start talking about instructional coaches. Uh, I think the the big thing is I'm uh, really looking forward to see what the curriculum management review is going to share about our curriculum, uh, which could also help us gu guide us in this area. I also am looking at a, uh, when you talk about coaching, uh, it's great to have coaches, but you know, I think we really have to make sure we clearly define what those coaches are doing and making sure that we have adopted a coaching model. So it, it makes it much more predictable and easier to do coaching across the district. And I think that's an equity thing as well. Um, it, it, Cause if you have several different coaches, you could have different, uh, different methods and maybe get different results. And so uh, I think the idea is that we really wanna make sure that we, if we're gonna invest in coaching, uh, we, which I, I've seen, I know co coaching is where the rubber hits the road in improving the instructional capacity uh, of, our, uh, of our teaching staff and also improving uh, the leadership capacity of our principals. Uh, around math instruction. So I think it's very powerful. Uh, and I think there's a lot of work to be done here. And I think it's very exciting. And uh, I thank Jen for her time again. I don't know where she found the time between site visits, curriculum management review, uh, and ed quality, but, uh, you know, very impressed. So uh, thank you. Great. Well, we'll leave it with that. And uh, just a reminder that our next couple of reviews are going to be literacy and science. So you're more than welcome to join us committee discussions are at 5 p.m. before the first board meeting of the month. And um, we'll send the packet out again to everybody so you're, you have a chance to join us. Okay, thanks. Back to you, Scott. Many thanks, Kari and Jen. Um, before we proceed, uh, any uh, is there any desire among board members for a five minute break? Do you wanna just plow through? Okay, um, let's plow through. Floor, finance. Thanks, Scott. Um, so we had a meeting in just yesterday. I'm like forgetting all my days now. On the 16th, yes, just yesterday morning. Let's go just right through the agenda. So we're gonna try to do it just as a quick report out. We put in the agenda 15 minutes, but Lori's here with us too, if you have more in and Brian too. So for phase 5.4 finance committee discussion, 5.41 carry leaves grant. So you saw the information in page 50. 
we received those five grants, the Summer Food Grant, the Food Service Equipment Efficiency Vermont, uh, the CRF LEA grant, and the ESSERS grant. And all of those total the 4.3 that we shared at the, at the budget uh, presentation. And I, I think that one thing to, to do in public here, and we did at the, at the public meeting right now, was to just, you know, thank me and Matt, Penny, Michelle, Carla and Melissa for all the work. There was a lot of work that had to be done to be able to submit uh, all of these grants, and and it's a tremendous effort to get, you know uh, allocated all of this grant money for our district. And it also shows that you know we we had maybe a little bigger uh, uh, we received a little bit more grants than other districts because we were fully open uh, starting right at the beginning of the school year. So. 4.2, if you guys are okay with that, unless you want to go or open it for questions on, on that one, or can I plow through and then we do questions? Okay. In, in 5.42, an audit and fund balance, I do want Lori to, to speak a little bit so that in case a, a community member is, uh, like Alan had a few questions that I'll just say what I had taken on my notes from our meeting, but uh, I, the, the fund balance from 1920 didn't didn't change, right? So right now, when we started, when we started our, when we went through all the numbers on page, and I'm forgetting my pages here, when we went through all the numbers on page 64 and then moved to 67, the projected items for operations and all is $1,287,890,000. And, and Lori is still working on, on getting that fund balance to, you know, to show all of the savings from this year too. I want, I want Lori to be, give us a, just a quick run through page, I believe it's page 67. I don't have it right in front of me. I'm moving quickly to get there. So let me see. Seven, that's the current year. Is that where you want to focus or on the prior year floor? Yes. The current year? Okay. I, I wanted to focus in this in the current year, if that's okay. If you mm -hmm. could just that's go right. through that's page that 67. last yes. part before yes. we get to the one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Right. Okay, um, so when we got the CARES relief funds, there were um, funds that needed to be what we the state's calling repurposed, which means that they're staffing and other costs that we would have put in our budget, but because people were doing different things, like for example, remote learning or summer task force work for school reopening, we've already paid people to do that work. It's already in the budget. But the reason why the state requested that we repurpose and do some bookkeeping on that is because then that frees up money for the education fund. So on page 67 at the top, you'll see where I have a negative $836,152 in ed sp spending. And that means that we would be repurposing staff and giving back 836,000 to the state education fund. So that's good news because what that did was that actually gave them more confidence at the state that they have additional revenue coming in at the state. Um, and that's what's helping tax rate reductions for next year. You'll see the other $2 million coming into the budget for the CARES relief expenses. And then you will see the Efficiency Vermont 815,000 coming in as revenue. Those same amounts are going out um, down below under the expenses. So that doesn't impact the fund balance. It's really a bookkeeping exercise for us to run those transactions through the books. Um, but what is different is that in our fall projections, we had projected that we would have to pay for the nurses and the COVID coordinator and our some of our replacement for our um, remote teachers out of our regular budget. So we actually saved um, 4.2 FTEs for nine pay periods. That's the remote teachers that I was able to charge out and that's about 255,000. So that's a savings um, because I previously thought you might have to pay locally. And then we also had had previously a reserve for nursing and the COVID coordinator out of the fund balance this year. So what you'll see is based on our current operations, our fund balance this year would go up $966,000. So we've done a great job of managing the budget. And um, having said that, that was one of the reasons why 
um, we felt that tonight might be the night you would take a board action to transfer some of the fund balance. I know you've been patiently waiting for this transaction since last year when I asked you to hold up until we were sure. Um, and I'm very comfortable now. Um, we've received all but $600,000 out of these grants. Um, currently getting monitored by the state, but I believe we will get the last $600,000 and I'll know tomorrow morning. Um, if they do short us, I have other things I could have charged off to the grant. So I guess that's that's the great news is that all the grant money is in the bank pretty much. So um, at the end of the day, the fund balance will increase further. I'm still working on the savings associated with not having athletics full-time, not having field trips. Um, actually our staff has been quite healthy and we haven't seen as many subs due to colds and the flu. So we are saving some money and I'm hoping to start rolling that up as soon as I get done with the audit next week. So at the bottom you would see, um, we'd still have a $1.2 million fund balance right now if the board did decide to transfer the 1.5 million over to the capital fund. Did I go too fast? Um, last but not least, what we didn't cover was that we have approximately another million dollars coming in for another CARES grant. Um, it should be, I believe, for next fiscal year. So some of the reservations and fund balance, like for the nursing and the COVID coordinator, um, would be expected to qualify out of this new million dollars that Washington Central should receive. Um, we'll get more information about that with instructions in the next few months, but it's all good news. So thank you. Thank you, Lori. So now moving to 5.43 review capital projects for year 21-22. Um, I'm wondering, are, are you okay with making a motion? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just what I was going to say. Invite a motion. Yeah. So I was I was reading the but so the first motion is to authorize the capital project budget of nine hundred and eighty-one thousand and sixty-four. Uh, subject to a reduction in state or federal aid. And I'll explain after if somebody is willing to second that. Second it, Diane. Thank, Thank you, Diane. Diane. Floor moved, uh, Diane. Second. Okay, um, go ahead and explain, Floor. Okay, my, my internet is saying that it's unstable. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my video. Can you hear me better now? Yes. More or less. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry, my <laughs> internet is acting up. So in um uh, let's say where to where to start. So we have uh, we had some pen, uh, some projects: the Berlin parking lot, the Romney gym, gym floor, and the U thirty two side project are still uh, going right. And these are separate projects funds uh, uh, that we approved before. Uh, and the capital fund balance is not enough to pay for for them. So we want to be able to move this. Um, uh, this this funds for, for the the two retaining funds that we have one at U thirty two and one at uh, at Berlin. Can you hear me? Okay, I just can't. Yeah, um, the, uh, uh, that was very clear, Flora. Thanks. So basically, we're reserving those funds in the event that the federal and state money that would pay for it is is not doesn't come through. Is that um, how we should understand this? Yes. Great. Yeah. Okay. And, and the, uh, Chris. Yeah, the funds that we're reserving is $981,064. And that's for the um, uh, water runoff at Berlin and U32 plus the projects at Rumney and Central Office, are they all incorporated in the 981-64? Yes. 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 <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't sure yeah. if she was. And then, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lori. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Um, yeah. Other board questions? 
If not, um, we can, oh, oh, Diane. Yeah, so um, you were mentioning that two of the projects, so like the Berlin one, and I don't know if it was the uh, retaining pond or whatever um, at U32, were those in a previous budget? And if so, um, how does that connect to this then moving forward for additional money? Did you want me to answer that or floor? Please. Okay. Um, um, so Diane, when you do water projects, the state has a separate division that often offers um, grants. And so when that came to be, I checked in and that department still exists and they still have funding, but what's happening is they're waiting for this spring for the legislature to approve their budget. Then they're gonna send out applications and they don't always pay 100%, but they usually pay a considerable sum for planning and for getting these uh, projects in motion. Uh, so we would have more information about the funding in the spring, but just like last meeting when, you know, Lindy reminded us that we should um, put it subject to reduction in state or federal aid, that would be appropriate here. So when the funds are available, um, we would apply those first. Are you good, Diane? Yes, thanks. Okay. Other other questions before we go to a vote? If not, all in favor of uh, the, the motion that Floor made to reserve the amount that I don't have in front of me, but um, that was seconded by Diane. Um, 981. Please. <laughs> go for it, Floor. $981,064. Excellent. Um, if you're in favor, click yes. Opposed, click no. And I'm seeing all yeses. Motion carries. Please continue. And, okay, we have a second motion to authorize a fund balance transfer from the general fund to the capital fund in the amount of $1,500,000. Excellent. Floor moves. Is there a second? I'll second. second uh, Sorry. Okay. Um, Kari seconds. Thanks. Um, and thanks for the backup from Jill and Dorothy. Um, very good. Discussion. Chris. So we're we just heard about our math program, uh, which does not sound very powerful, um, and that we uh, are in, um, I think, in need of math coaches. Um, so I would want to move to a reserve out of this $1.5 million transfer, um, enough money to hire three math coaches um, at least, and I know that's an arbitrary number because we haven't heard the number three, but we did hear Jen suggest that we should have a math coach at each school. And I think we only have two now, if I'm wrong on the number, uh, then, but uh, so I'm gonna move that we amend this and reserve enough money to hire three math coaches uh, with the understanding that Brian has concerns about how we use math coaches, but that would be in, in uh, you know, our administration's um, area of expertise, but that we fund those for this upcoming year um, because it doesn't seem like there's time to lose. Uh, Chris has made an amendment, uh, has moved an amendment that is. Is there a second for that amendment before I go to Floor? I'll second. Dorothy seconds, okay. Um, Floor? Yeah, can you hear me? So, yes. uh, Chris, I, I think my, my input on, on that by you know, sort of sitting both in the quality committee and in the finance committee, it would be that, you know, we can't make decisions uh, like that, you know, like the, it, it comes out of student needs and it would be a proposal that, it, especially with the curriculum um, review going on right now. So we would need that first and the strategic plan, and then we can decide how to allocate that money. I wouldn't, it, like Lori was saying, you know, she's still working on, on making this fund balance, uh, you know, getting the final number on the fund balance, but our capital plan is, 
is really underfunded. And I know that a lot of the time we see the capital money not as educational, but it is still an investment on because the built environment affects our, our kids and our administrators. So the way that we are thinking of using this money are all is, is projects that we will be deferring that we will, will cost us more money <laughs> later. So that's just my, 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 my opinion since uh, it's very underfunded. Thanks. Uh, Lori. By that we do have 3.2 um, coaches in the budget for next year already. 3.2 3 .2 coaches. 3.2 FTEs in between grant funds and local funds. And I'm not quite sure where that would all go, if it's all math or if it's some of other topic areas. But I just didn't want us to supplant because some of this is coming out of grants, Chris. And I just didn't want you to use local money when we already have it in some grant budgets for next year. And additionally, 3.2 FTEs. Across the entire across the entire district. True. Plus this million dollar grant that I just mentioned, um, I'm able to, if we needed some supplemental services, it's my understanding that I could also use some of that money to pay for um, student needs when right now things are a little slow. So I wouldn't want to use local money without having that million dollar grant in our hand that you can see and um, understand better about how that money could be used. Is that million dollar grant fungible in terms of can it be used for capital projects? I was just told no. I did ask that. It is not for school construction. It is solely for student services types of things like remote learning, uh, PP&E, things to do with the pandemic. If we have students who are behind because of the pandemic, we've put in a request that they might consider that. I was asked to help write the legislation for some of those items, just like I did with the prior CARES grant. So I just wanted you to know I could add that to the list. Um, Flora, and then Jen. It, it, uh, I'll defer to Jen. I was just going to see what Brian was sitting in this meeting with us too. So I was wanting him to sit. So I'll, I'll defer to Jen and then wait. Thank you. I um, am so appreciative of the support for instructional coaching. That is huge. In fact, tomorrow morning we have a meeting with folks across the district who are interested in coaching to continue to talk about cultivating coaching culture. I want to underscore what Lori said as well, though. We do have, um, we have money earmarked in the grant to, to continue to support coaching. And there have been changes in grant requirements that are um, sort of promoting some of the shifting of funding. And I don't want to get us into supplanting trouble. So I am so appreciative of the sen sentiment. And I think um, we just need to wait and have the grants play out a little bit. Is that, Jen, can, is that grant money, um, will it be available for additional coaches for the upcoming school year? We're hopeful. I mean, that's what Lori and I have been working yeah. on, um, designating that money. And I think in addition to that 3.2, there are, there are chunks of some coaching or PD across the district in other grant pools. And I just met with Michelle today. We're, we're doing some projection of preliminary numbers for some of the Title I schools. So I think we're going to be okay. If we aren't, then it is awesome to know that there may be support on the board for more local funds. Um, I think everybody's appreciative, but I, I just, there's a, like a time frame in terms of applying for the grant and ensuring that we don't supplant. Thank you very much, Jen. So do you all feel uh, ready to vote intelligently on Chris's amendment to, uh, he amended the main motion in order to reserve money for coaches. Um, ready to vote on that? Uh, uh, Brian? I, I just think that uh, it's important to, uh, another thing is what model are the coaches using uh, to give feedback and uh, across the district? What, what, are we, what are they coaching on? What does the curriculum management review say? What if, they, what if there are other findings in that review that say we need to do more with curriculum or writing or other pieces. Uh, so I don't want to put, put the cart before the horse, right? So there might be other work that may need, may need to happen in addition to coaches. I think coaches is the uh, ultimate goal to get there. Uh, but I, I, I just hate to 
you know, buy the house and uh, get ready to move in, and then you find out that it's a uh, it's it's on a uh, it's, it's on a sinkhole. You know, we do some, there's other things we need, may need to think about doing. Uh, and I always thought that uh, if we were going to use local funds, that's great. I will say there are districts across the country where it's very hard to even get folks to say, let's invest in coaching. That does not seem to be the case here in Washington Central. So I am completely blown away and extremely happy for that kind of support. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, you, know, you don't spend the money on coaches when we may need something else, depending on what the curriculum management review and what the uh, entry plan and what other results may come out of it. Thanks, Brian. Okay, ready for a vote on the amendment by Chris, seconded by Dorothy, to reserve money out of the capital fund transfer for math coaches. Um, you've heard, you've heard the background. Uh, okay, a vote of yes means you're voting to reserve money out of the capital fund. A no vote means the amendment is rejected, and we go back to the main motion. So um, please uh, click yes for the amendment or no um, against the amendment. Okay, I'm gonna need to count these up. I'm seeing two yeses. Um, two yeses, three yeses, wait a minute. Um, wait a minute, one, two, three. Uh, they disappear before I can count them. Um, if, if somebody wishes to help me, um, obviously my own math skills are insufficient. Um, can we do a, uh, can we do it again just so that I can get this? This is in the amendment, right? This is the amendment. It's this is the my internet. So, okay, okay, okay. I only see. Yeah. Okay. I don't see I, some votes. I don't see. Uh, yeah. I don't see um, Kari's vote or where are people or voting? Because it's not showing on the checks and square and X's. I see a uh, no on, on on your your screen. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just going to have to call the roll. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, I, I I need to have an accurate count here. Um. So, Chris McVeigh. Yes. Chris McVeigh is yes. Flora Diaz Smith. No. No. Um, everybody's moving around. Dorothy. Yes. Dorothy is yes. Um, Kari. No. Kari is no. Um, Diane. No. Diane is no. Um, Jael? Yes. Jael is yes. Jill? No. Jill is no. Jonas? No. Jonas is no. Um, Caroline? No. Caroline is no. Lindy? No. No. Um, and I am also no. So I have three yeses and three, six, eight no's. Does that, um, okay. So the no's, the no's have it. Um, we're back to the main motion, uh, Floor's motion. Do we need to discuss it further? Uh, Fleur, do you mind um, reminding all of us of, of that motion? To authorize a fund balance transfer from the general fund to the capital fund in the amount of $1.5 million. $1.5 million, thank you. And that uh, had been seconded, I've now forgotten, but Lisa remembers. Right, Lisa? By Diane. Yeah. By Diane, yeah. was it? I have that. Yes, thank uh, you. Okay. Wasn't it Great. Kari? I thought it was Kari. You know, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think it, it, it was, was Kari. Right. You're right. Yeah, Sorry. it was seconded by Kari. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, more discussion on this? Or shall we move to a vote? All in favor of the main motion 
Moved by Fleur, seconded by Kari, to transfer 1.5 million to the capital fund. Please click yes. If you're opposed, click no. And I'm seeing all, I, I'm seeing one no and um, all the yeses. Um, as a courtesy, Chris, you're welcome to explain your no vote. I'm guessing it has to do with the it's, amendment. But... Scott, excuse, uh, sorry, Scott, <laughs> yes. but there, there are still yes. a bunch of votes that I didn't see show up in the participants check. Okay, um, let's do this again. You're right. Um, they they pop up and then and then vanish before you can get a good clear count. But people click everybody... twice; it goes off. Um, it, it seems to it seems to go off after a certain period of time, anyway. Um, so uh, the only no vote I saw was um, was Chris. Were there other no votes besides Chris? Okay, um, so the uh, the eyes have it, but but Chris, um, I I am voting no, not because I don't believe in the the concept, but I think it's probably too much money to transfer all at once, um, and I also just think we should also be funding our coaching, if um, given the report that we heard about the need for it and not, not wait for a rain, you know, another day to come by, um, hopefully with a grant or not. I think it should be something that we're incorporating into our regular budget as opposed to relying upon grant funding um, because it apparently works. So that's, that's my rationale. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we can move on now to 5.4.4. Flora? Want to take it? Yes. Uh, so hiring a facilities director. Am I jumping anything? Let me just make sure I'm in there. So let me. Yeah. So hi, it, so we wanted to report back and hopefully we we have it in our budget for next year. Uh, facilities director, and uh, and we are wanting to start that process a little bit sooner, which would be to start authorize us to. Uh, well, I authorize Brian and his team and Carla to post uh, the, the position so that we can uh, hire this person sooner rather than later. Uh, we believe that we can fund it. Lori has, it's really by the time we hire it, it's going to be just two months uh, before we were thinking of hiring them uh, full time for the next uh, school year. So we would like to, you know, free uh, Brian and our principals so that they have a more time for instructional leadership rather than spending, you know, it's time putting out fires um, that are related to facilities. Uh, could you hear me? I just see everybody frozen. So that, that was great. That's that. And it's just a report out. It's just a report out that we don't need any action on this unless there's, you know, obviously please give us your opinion, but it's just, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, information out because yeah, at this process, we're not quite hiring. He, they haven't, we don't have candidates. We don't have a committee. It, it's, it's about posting it and seeing if it's possible to get somebody sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Scott, back to you. Is, is that? It, it sounds, um, I don't see any board members with questions. So if you want to move on to 5.4.5. Okay, so I'll move on to the technology. Yep, so uh, the technology equipment uh, authorization is in page 72, and it's also more of a report out because until we have RFPs, we won't have much to to this discuss. But right now, uh, the district is, as we've discussed before, is in the middle of a technology assessment, and uh, Jim has been working to really figure out what um, the infrastructure that we need mostly for, for storage. I'm going back to my, my notes. It, the district uh, right now has uh, uh, some infrastructure uh, housed at U32 that is out of date, that will be repurposed and moved to our elementary schools. 
because uh, there will still be usable service there. But in the meantime, uh, he's hoping to, you know, to get a uh, five to seven years in from this new infrastructure <laughs> and infrastructure that we were hoping to put our RFP out. And we will continue to update you as we have more information. And I believe Jim is on the call if he has something to add to that, but also seeing the hour, I'll leave it up to our chair to decide if that's where we wanna go. Yeah, I, I think um, it's explained pretty well in the in the attached documentation. So okay. um, unless board members have questions specifically, I think we can um, uh, consider it um, taken, taken on board um, and that Jim has uh, has our blessing. Um, thank you. That's the end of the facilities report. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Flora. Um, before I turn it over and to you, Chris. Report. Oh, sorry, Flora. Oh, I just say facilities and it was fine. And sorry, I just so used to that. Sorry. And we are meeting it's for facilities right after with, with Brian and Lori. So I've been... But you said facilities and I heard finance, so it, 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 it all works out. Um, so uh, before I turn it over to you, Chris, um, perhaps we can invite a motion to approve on second reading the, um, the policies that are up for approval and adoption. Um, would anyone like to move those policies? I will. Dorothy. I'll moves. move for second reading and adoption of policy F F22, um, data retention and storage, F25, access control, and F41, reasonable care and protecting propriety and our confidential information. Thank you very much. Is there a second? All I'll second. second. <laughs> I have Caroline as second. Thanks. Um, very good. Chris. Okay, thank you very much. This is the um, second reading for these policies that, that we uh, uh, discussed or read last time. And there's been no changes that I'm aware of uh, through the committee uh, or from the conversation that we had at our last meeting. So um, we'll take them one by one. Is there any Chain, any questions about F22, which is the data retention and storage policy? Uh, I, Lindy, I see. Yeah, I just, I see thumb drives, UBS. I think it's USBs. I think it's just a simple little typo on F22. Okay. Unless, unless I've been calling them the wrong thing all these years. It's a, that might be our financing company. <laughs> um, is that, but we'll make that change. Any others? Okay. Uh, next up is um, F25, the access control policy. Any comments or questions about it? And the final one for uh, this Chris, evening, I, I, yeah. Lindy. Li it's oh. just me. I, I just had a question because I'm so used to from when I was on policy committee that they were quite often um, vetted through VSBA or they had the little like that they were model policies or they just had the little sections and everything. None of these do. And so I was curious about that. So um, Jim Garrity. Um, developed these policies for us, and we vet, we worked through them at the um, at the policy committee, and so uh, he could explain the origin of these if you would like. No, no, that answered my question. I just okay. I'm used to seeing that, and I didn't right. see it, so I wanted to know where they came from, and if we were changing the way we do things. Nope, this was just a. Uh, um, I mean, the the original policy was just like 40 pages. And we, we broke it into different sections. Um, so last up is F41, the reasonable care and protecting proprietary and or confidential, confidential information policy. Any questions? Uh, 
Okay, Scott, you want to call for the vote? Sure. Um, if you're ready for a vote, please click yes if you're in favor of adopting the policies as moved by Dorothy and seconded by Caroline. And no if you're opposed. And I'm seeing all the yeses. So motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Scott, Scott, are you only seeing five yeses there? Great, thanks. I, I Can saw you count up exactly how many. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, how about this? If does anybody say no? If not, okay. Um, it's really hard to count. <laughs> Eleven. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Uh, Scott, one one uh, item is uh, Zoom did report an issue uh, tonight with both chat and with uh, with voting, um, and it's an active issue. So we might continue to see this tonight, um, but um, you, you know, so I'll I'll keep track of, of their their outage window to see when this will be corrected. But it may not be corrected before the end of tonight's meeting. Thank you for that, Jim. Um, we'll we'll work with it. Thanks. Appreciate uh, I that. I think the raise hand function lasts longer, so we could all just raise our hand if we're voting yes. Okay. Great idea. Thank you, Jill. All right. So we can move on to board operations. Um, Floor, uh, should we have a motion to approve this to start it off? Yes. Uh, that that would be great. Yeah. I didn't. I hadn't written a motion myself, but uh, uh, let me come up with something. So, uh, do we need a yeah to authorize the the superintendent chair and vice chair to to write to um, sign a letter in behalf of um, the school board in support of uh, of the comments in our letter. Uh, so basically, it was making some clarifications about H. 81 and H63. Can you hear Great. me? Yeah, um, that sounds good. Just make sure that Lisa, were you able to get that, Lisa? Sorry, it takes me forever to unmute. Um, no, I was, I was in the middle of typing it. So Floor moved to authorize the superintendent. Um, who were the other people? Sorry. Um, chair, chair and vice chair, I believe she said. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to make it just chair, but they made me put my name on it. So, uh, yeah, so chair and vice chair. To sign a letter. On behalf of the board. <laughs> yep. Okay. In support, uh, you know, of the letter submitted in the package, I think that might be more clear. <laughs> Okay. I'll just refer to that actual document. It's in page 79. Yeah. February 17th. Excellent. Yeah, today. Yeah. And and then the only the only change so as of because this was moving so so quickly and it passed in the house just yesterday. Think that it would be best now. So we would be authorizing this letter just to give some. Con well, I guess let's second, and then I'll have discussion. Sorry, Scott. Yeah, no, no problem, Floor. Is there a second for Floor's motion? Second. For seconds. Very good. Carry on, Floor. So the the bill is now out of the of the house, and we're not exactly sure if it's going to move, move to economic development and housing and general affairs sorry, economic development or to housing and general affairs. So if we, if your guys are okay, just with the, what the letter says, it, by tomorrow, hopefully we will know which committee. And in the meantime, we would send it to the Senator, our senators and to Janet and Kimberly, even though it already passed the house. I don't know if you had a chance to, to read the letter or need some clarification on, on what this is about. <laughs> Does anybody want to um, ask Floor about the letter, or it, it 
uh, Jonas. So um, I think I recall that the um, the differences between H81 and H63 were in how they uh, define the arbitration process for the statewide healthcare uh, bargaining commission. Do I, do I remember that correctly Floor? Yes. And what is the mechanism by which we think that H 63 would reduce the district's healthcare spending, allowing us to spend money on other things? How else, you know, if, if that's going to reduce our share of healthcare, who else would be picking up that share of the healthcare? So, uh, well, that it, I, I think it, the the way this bill is going. So I'm, uh, you know, I, I don't have all of the um, all, of, all of the details, but but this bill, a lot of people are calling this bill just as uh, it, doing some technical ch changes. So I don't have the complete answer to that question, but because it's until you negotiate that you will know that we require this uh, the bill right now. H sixty three. They just can on the wall. It requires uh, one of the big changes is that it requires both sides to submit a full cost estimate from both parties that will include that information. The way that H81 has it, that there's no, it's still in labor, there's no, no cost estimate is submitted uh, to, to the negotiation uh, table, right? Does that, so is that? Yeah, Floor, would it would it be fair to say that a, that the intent uh, in supporting H sixty three would be to make it more likely that uh, that in the case of arbitration uh, with that commission that the school board side would be the, the side representing school boards would be more likely to win that arbitration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The biggest, okay. you know, Thank two you. of the two. Two of the biggest changes I, I can uh, for the bargaining group is the biggest one on, on the employee side is that the has requested to change from earlier fundamental agreement to have the same terms applied to employees covered by the agreement. And the, and the employee side wants to ditch that, which opens up complex negotiation issues. And that might help to increase costs that will create a major administrative burden, right? So that's one big related to what you're saying. Thanks, Flor. Uh, I can't see anybody, so it feels really weird to be able to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's okay, um, Dorothy. I just wanted to mention that when we send letters to uh, our representatives, and you just mentioned Janet and uh, Kim, but there are representatives that represent Worcester and Berlin. I think we should always include them and have just have them on the list as well as all three senators all, all the time. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree, Dorothy. Yeah, and I was just mentioning that because it already have passed on the House right now, it should go to the Senate, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Wonderful. Are, are we ready for a vote? And I, I think the last thing that I would say is that we, uh, at the beginning of this, uh, I, I believe it was Carrie that brought it up that we, uh, our increase in healthcare for us this year is 9.5, right? So if, if we are able to really manage, this is what this bill ultimately is the goal, right? That we don't have enough, we don't have flexibility as a board to spend the dollars where we need them for our kids, which is what we were saying on the letter, but that is, really between all of the technical changes, that's the major thing. We wanna be able to have more dollars for instructional rather than healthcare. That's it. I see Diane, you have uh, Diane and then Jonas. Well, so I wonder what the impact will eventually potentially be on negotiations. And so I guess that's where, uh, and I don't think you can answer that, but I just, you know, I, I, it's a complex issue that I'm not really sure hundred percent. I completely understand where we're going. And I just worry because I don't want to balance healthcare. I, I get it. We want to spend where we need to, but I worry about balancing it on the backs of our, of our staff as well. 
Yeah, and, and that's not what this bill is about. It's, it's more about changing language that allows us to have uh, actual estimates of what the, the cost of healthcare are, to, to have more documents on the table to be able to make more informed decisions. That's all I would say. Great. Thanks, <laughs> Jonas and then Chris. I, I've already gone, so if Chris wants to go, I'll Oh, I'll yeah, talk. quite right. Thank you, Jonas. And Chris, and then... Um, Thank you, Donus. Um, and so, Floor, what is what prevents that from being done already? Having those estimates as part of the negotiation or any part of any um, the, yeah, right part now, of any negotiation or resolution? Yeah. But right, right now, they're not required, and I, you know, I don't sit on the bargaining uh, committee, so I don't, I don't have all the details. But this this was brought originally by both sides last year. And, and then this year it was changed to, you know, more focus on, on labor and technical changes or technical corrections, they're calling it, instead of actually making a, taking into account the testimony from, from last year. So it, I don't, I don't have, I, I would be lying to you if I knew all the details. I don't, I don't, I don't sit on the, on the commission. So what is, what was understandable to me and clear is what, what I put on the letter and Lori helped with all the, the, you know, the numbers, what it means to, to us as a, as a district, because we are right now it's that part would be out of our hands anyways, because it's by the bargaining commission that will be, you know, it, so it's, it's really authorizing data to make informed decisions in my mind, you know, that's how I simplify it. Thanks. Um, Lindy. <clears throat> um, it was the H81 that passed today. This is separate, yeah. is my understanding. The 63. It, yeah, the 63 is separate, but what happened, what passed today, they're trying to send it back to, uh, they're sending it to the Senate. So we're trying to still get pieces of H63 into H81, and it's not called H81 anymore. It's, uh, I forget what they, let me see. It, you, everybody got an email yesterday from, I believe, to take action to. But yeah, it's H. It's H eighty one is what passed today in, yes. in the in the House, and now it's going to to the Senate to to Becca's committee. So what we're hoping is that they will because uh, the the original committee had left H sixty three on the wall. They didn't cancel it, they still left H63 on the wall, that there's still an opportunity to bring pieces of H63 and, and make it a different bill. All right, so my other comment was about the letter that I have a little bit of problem with, is the statement, whatever, the public that um, we're having to move money from programs to benefit our kids. And it just feels like um, because we don't value our staff enough where the healthcare costs are so out of control everywhere that this that kind of concerns me the way it's worded there, uh, that our children are being, disp I don't, it's just the wording that we're making this choice or that we're in a place where we can't fund programs because that it just sounds like um, it, it doesn't sound right to me where it's really a much bigger problem of healthcare costs and the value of uh, healthcare is a mess. And so I'm having problems with the way it's worded in this letter that um, we have to contain it in order to have the programs for our students. Thanks, Lindy. Um, <clears throat> are, are we ready to go to a vote? Have we heard enough to be able to vote? So um, all in favor of approving the, uh, or authorizing um, Brian, Floor, and me to sign this letter, please maybe raise your hand or- um, Thumbs up. Or maybe thumbs up will, will work too. Um, I'm at or hit no. I, I see one no. 
Um, otherwise, everybody else is for. Um, uh, uh, Jonas is a no as well. I see Lindy and Jonas as no's. Are, am I missing any other no's? So Jael that is, is also a no. Jael is also oh, a no. Jael, also a no. Thank you. So are we once again um, eight yeses, three noes. The um, the motion passes. Okay. Um, move on to town meeting update. Floor, do you want to take this one as well? Thanks, Scott. So the town. It, I, I think most of you were at the budget meeting. That was part of our town meeting update. Our town. Our next. Um, a informational meeting is scheduled for March 1st, and that is required <laughs> by, by law. So we hope to see everybody there. It, we, not everybody needs to, I, and that was a clarification that I, I had, but it, hopefully all of you can attend our March 1st informational uh, meeting. And then March 2nd is town meeting. And everybody needs to go out and, and vote and help, uh, you know, answer questions from the community in, uh, yeah, that they are especially because our our reports went out a little bit later than than we wanted and and helping your town clerks uh, you know putting a little pressure on your town clerks to post all the information in their websites is some of our town clerks have done it and some haven't yet uh, that's all yeah. i that's all i have and Thanks, so you were gonna I possibly write a letter to post yeah, um, just tomorrow. to, to uh, send around that for everybody's use to just, um, you know, beat the drums in your own, uh, in your own towns to get people to vote and get people to vote in favor of the budget and other articles. Brian? Yeah, I just want to also point out that uh, it's, it's my understanding that uh, the, the challenge this year has been that the ballot, everyone's has a ballot, it's getting a, a electronic, a, a ballot mailed home. The town sent out the ballots. The annual report was printed as quickly as possible to get it out. It, they went out, they were printed out uh, on Friday. They were delivered here on late Friday. They went out uh, yesterday and I believe people got them today. Uh, so pretty good. Uh, then I think the, I also heard that many, some towns received their town reports just yesterday. So we're not really far behind in the uh, thing. I think the difference is that the ballots went out. We don't control all that, but the ballots have to go out. So there was, it was, it's just been a unique year in that regards. But I also know that we typically don't mail out annual reports, right? So, uh, but this is the first time. So uh, we're learning how to do this. And, uh, you know, very excited that we were, this is the earliest we've actually had the annual reports from what I was told out in the, in the previous years, so. Yeah, great, Lindy. Um, I think if I know Worcester and I saw it on Front Porch Forum and I have to go look it back up, look it back up, that's not very good English, but um, has a write-in person. And I think we should be putting these names in our Front Porch Forums. Like that person put a little blurb about her and I'm going to go back and cut and paste that because all of us vote on school board members and they need a certain number of write-ins. And so I think we should, if there's somebody from Berlin, I should be putting the Berlin and the Worcester in the front porch forum for East Montpelier to just say who they are. I'm not endorsing, but I'm informing. Um, I know that that's one way, otherwise the other towns don't know who these people are. And since we're early voting, people have their ballots at home right now and could be, they are returning them. Yeah. I know tabulating is starting in some of the towns tomorrow. So um, we need good to idea. be getting that information out. Thank you very much for pointing that out, Wendy. Yeah. Well, I haven't done it yet, but I will. <laughs> Great. Brian. And I just want to thank Lindy for pointing out the, uh, trying to make sure we get the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, asking for help with help, asking the towns for help to, with uh, getting the word out about their, our annual report. So thank you, Lindy. Excellent, uh, Jill. So Lindy, I, I really appreciate your effort on the um, the write-in. Will you be sharing that with us so that um, we can we can do what you're suggesting? Okay, 
Sure, I'll put it together. Um, I think it's only the Worcester one I know of. I don't think okay. I've heard of anyone from Berlin, but I'll get it out. That would That's be correct. really helpful. And then, yeah, and then we have Scott, I think you already sent around something about today's budget hearing. And so we can probably work from that to post something in front porch forum. Yeah, and, and I'll be I'll be cranking out something else too. Um, okay, to great. About. Okay. And I'll share what I Super. put in front porch forum each time because I do it for East Montpelier. But I don't say share to communities because it's also Barry and um, Montpelier. And I think that's kind of silly. Um, but I can mm -hmm. share that as well. That Thank would be much. super helpful. Great. Um, anything else on town meeting update? I guess we just need to send invitations, Brian. Uh, we don't have, I believe that time is five o'clock, but I don't think that board members have uh, the March 1st on their calendars yet. So we, we just confirmed the time and yeah. yeah. Great, appreciate your pointing that out, Fleur. Good, so if we're done with um, 6.2, town meeting update, we can move on to 6.3, superintendent evaluation goals. Caroline? Thank you. So we have a proposed plan that defines a target for each of the board goals, along with pieces of evidence that could be used to assess that the target was met. We discussed at length the use of surveys and input from staff and input from the leadership team. Um, once we looked at individual goals, it was more clear to see where input would be essential. So for the next meeting, it would be great if board members could review the document, um, which will be emailed to you all tomorrow, and then come to the meeting with questions and comments. So we still will need to define a timeline for gathering feedback and um, having the board meet to discuss the evaluation. Um, but at the next, so the next board meeting is the reorganization meeting. I'm hoping to get this on the agenda. Um, and I'm hoping that we would leave that meeting with a final um, superintendent evaluation plan. It, it, it may not include the timeline, but that the document um, that the committees created would would be able to be finalized. So if when you get um, the document, if you have any questions or feedback, you're welcome to email them ahead, but definitely coming to the meeting prepared um, uh, would be great. So thanks. Thank you, Caroline. Um, any questions before we continue? Okay, very good. So Jonas, um, negotiations update. I th do you have anything I think further? We've done that. I think we've done that. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So we can move on to the consent agenda. Would anyone be willing to move to approve the minutes of um, minutes of February third? So move. I'll move to approve the minutes of February third. I'll second. Okay, I got. Um, Okay, I got Jonas moving and Chris seconding. Any changes to the minutes? If not, um, all in favor, please raise your hand and opposed to show no. And I'm seeing all hands raised and no no's. Um, so, okay. The motion passes unanimously. Um, next, 7.2, approve board orders. Um, might there possibly be someone kind enough, Lindy, to move to approve the board orders? Yes, I am. I'm going to, to do it in the two figures because I didn't check that total and one time that wasn't right. So I don't want to do that wrong. So to approve the board orders of $287,894.57. The second one is 
No, $15,267.95. Thank you, Lindy. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Caroline. So Lindy moves, Caroline seconds. Are there any questions about the board orders? If not, we can go to a vote. Um, please raise your hand if you're in favor and uh, click no if you're opposed. And once again, I'm seeing all hands raised. So motion carries unanimously. The board orders are approved. And um, in, in keeping with our customary practice, I imagine Floor is already um, setting the example for the rest of us, uh, sending in the email. Um, thank you, Floor. Uh, so, um, 7.3, uh, is there a motion to approve the job description for the speech language pathologist at page 84? We're beginning at page 84. I'll move. Jael moves to approve the job des description. Is there a second? I'll second, Jonas. Jonas seconds. Very good. Um, are, are there any board member questions about this? I see Kelly has has um, uh, gone to battle stations to answer any questions that we might have. Um, anybody have any questions? I do. I, it's Diane. Oh, sorry, um, Diane. So I just did a quick read through, but it doesn't look as though preschool is listed in there. Is there a separate one for the preschool SLP? We didn't specify grade level. There is some grade level stuff down below. It's under supervision. So I guess that doesn't really matter, but I, it just, I just wondered. This is one job description for all SLPs pre-K through graduation. Okay, so that then there, I would just recommend that under supervision received, which is what uh, page 87, that, you know, you just put pre K in there before the eight. I mean, you know, the, it says K to eight currently. Okay, we can, that's an easy fix. Yep. Great, thanks. Uh, anything else for Kelly before we move to a vote? If not, all in favor of approving the job description for speech language pathologist beginning on page 84, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, click no. Um, and I'm seeing all raised hands. The motion carries unanimously. Many thanks everyone. Um, 8.1, I believe, um, it's not, what are we approving here? There is something here, isn't there? Social work position. New position. Social work position, yes, thank you. Um, do we have a motion to uh, approve the social work worker position? I'll make I a motion to I'll approve. <laughs> okay, um, Carol, uh, bless you, Caroline, Moved and uh, uh, did I hear a, um, a second? Diane seconded. Diane seconded. Thank you very much. Um, any questions about this one? This is transfer from a contract to um, a staff position. Is that correct, Kelly? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so is, is, I do have a question because this came up that it wasn't, um, I mean, I think it was a challenge to fill, but then it also wasn't that the focus was on the math instructor, that there needed to be a replacement. Is this that same position? So it's- No, different? no. Okay, no, so, so we, for next year, we have in the budget that this was a plan to have this position on staff. We budgeted for that in, in the process. And then, and about a month ago, the person that's in the role through the Washington County contract resigned. And instead of having Washington County fill that position again, uh, 
you know, with the U32 leadership team, we talked about fewer transitions for students and families. And if the intent is for us to hire our own person for next year, why not do that now? Knowing also that we would hire and fill the position only from now until June. However, if it's a good fit, right, with this, whoever we hire, we would hope that they would stay on and be a more permanent employee going forward. Yep. And I just want to add on to that part is that if we do hire a person, they would still have to apply for the job for next year. Just putting that there. Yep. Right. So I, I guess I'm a little confused and I'll leave it alone. However, it seemed to be, and I know that other position was a U32 position, but it seemed like we were kind of stuck at that point, or there was a sense of being stuck and needing to really focus on the math, um, the math opening vacancy. And, um, and the, I don't, and this is late in my thinking that it was also, there wasn't a, nobody was applying, but anyway, but so I, I'm a little confused as to how we made a decision in the fall going one way. And then now we're, we're it, it seems to be a little different now. I don't know that there's any correlation with this position in a math there, position. There are two separate, I think Diane, you're, you're, get, you're putting the two, there's two different positions here. Right? The math thing is a different situation with a different narrative. This is uh, really about a contracted position uh, that we're trying to convert into a social worker position uh, because we have a need for that right now. Uh, we could go back to the contractor position uh, and just keep that the way it is. Uh, at, unfortunately, though, we were looking to hire a social worker for next year. And so if we did find someone and it worked out, uh, they would already have a they would already have a kind of a head start for next year. Uh, so it's really nothing to do with the math position. That's a different that's a different uh, FTE. <laughs> Yeah, and, and again, uh, you know, I'll go back in the minutes to clarify for my own thinking, and it wasn't the other math issue that was in there. It was around people, and the focus and the statements were made that we're, we have to look at academics first, and that's what we were going to move forward on. And so, again, I'll just go back and try to refresh my memory around it. I think this absolutely is necessary and needed, and I hope we're able to find the person. I, I noticed that Stephen also is. It it just ready. dawned on it just dawned on me exactly what Diane is talking about. At the at the beginning of the year, we chose not to fill a part time social work position so that we could have a math teacher at the beginning of the year. Yes. That would be for this one year only. What we found ourselves, we've still we've got that math teacher. We're all set with that through the end of the year. This position is to fill um, because of the opening from uh, the person leaving from Washington County Mental Health. And we are also next year going to have that as a full time social worker position. We wanted to just see if we could provide continuity and not go through a couple of people um, with their contract. And then with our contract, we're trying to hire somebody now that will go into next year in this new position. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Stephen. Are we ready for a vote? Is it all clear to everyone now? If so, in, <clears throat> if you're in favor of approving the social worker position, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, click no. And I'm seeing all hands raised. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much to everyone. Um, now we arrive at, um, for our uh, patient long suffering public, um, the moment for public comments, um, bearing in mind, of course, Chris's request that we'll get to under the next agenda item. But um, are there any members of the public who would like to take the opportunity to, to speak up, um, you're more than welcome. You can just sort of take a couple of breaths and we did have the, the budget forum, which was an opportunity for the public early on today. So um, with that, I'll, 
move to future agenda items. And um, Chris, would you like to repeat your request? Um, yes, I'd, I'd like to have a discussion on moving the public comments section um, of our uh, meeting from the tail end to the beginning of the of the um, meeting. I think thank we you. encourage participation. Um, thank you. Okay, um, Caroline. I I think I um, this yeah. The, the superintendent evaluation. Um, I'm thinking half an hour would give enough time for the discussion if people come prepared with um, their thoughts and comments. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Um, and Kari, I, I, oh, sorry, uh, Jonas, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to hear about um, the equity scholar in residence and how, if it's important, if how we might fund that moving forward. All right, thanks. And Kari, um, you have some ideas too. Yeah, I mentioned earlier um, today to Scott that uh, I think it's best practice for boards to evaluate their own performance and usually at the end of the year. So I, th I think looking at the calendar, we missed our the boat this year. But perhaps this would be um, a good lead in to um, the next retreat that we do that I think has been talked about um, as a way of furthering our um, governance goals. Thank you very much. Um, are there uh, any other? Uh, oh, sorry, Brian. Uh, just to put it out there again, uh, superintendent responsibilities, uh, board roles and responsibilities. Just love to explore that topic. Got it. Thank you very much. Um, is that you, Diane, behind that hand? That is. I'm just typing. <laughs> okay. I'm doing my mime impression. But um, <laughs> so I wonder. I would like to put on staff appreciation so that we begin to explore it um, ahead of time, as opposed to otherwise. And and also for us to also explore is there kind of a mid-year way to um, we have expressed appreciation, but also acknowledging to the community how much uh, we appreciate the hard work that's happening every day in our buildings, as well as remote too. So all the hard work that's going on um, within our, our, our school district, sorry. Thank you. Um, this is quite a cornucopia of future agenda items. Um, so great, uh, any, any others? Um, if not, we can move to board reflection. Um, if anybody would like to share anything. Um, uh, Jael, oh yeah, um, yeah, th that, that was an obvious one. Sorry, Jael, please. I just wanna say that it's been such a pleasure to serve with such a wonderful group of people. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank all the staff and the administrators and the teachers for such a fantastic job. And um, it's been really wonderful getting to know all of you. Um, so thank you. And Jael, if I, if I might reciprocate thanks to you, um, certainly on my part, and I imagine also from all your colleagues on the board, uh, we very much appreciate you as um, one of the very few non sort of white uh, collar type people as a farmer, as an environmental activist, um, <clears throat> everything else that, that you are and do um, has really enriched our work and, and the time that we've spent on the board and we'll miss you. Um, and when, P if, if there's a place to uh, to run into people in Worcester in future, we'll have to make sure that um, you know that we drag you there and and have a chance to socialize when socializing is possible again. For sure, and I'll poke in. I'll drop into meetings here and there. Um, Great. 
check up on all of you, make sure you're doing a good job still. You'll, you'll always be welcome, always. You, 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 never, you never get to escape the, the fraternity sorority of school board members. Um, other, other reflections? If not, um, I think everybody is probably pretty beat. Um, so if there's no objection, we could adjourn by consensus at 927. No objection? All right. In that case, have a wonderful school vacation, all of you who can enjoy it. And um, just take good care, stay healthy. Look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank See you, you everyone. Bye. Bye, bye. Thanks, JL. Bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye, bye JL. See you on the trail, bye, JL. JL. <laughs> <laughs>